Welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Dr. Tom Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. We started on the 10 things uh, as far as responsibility for husband and wife and for home and family. And of course, the Word of God that stands over the church, Living Word Bible Church, is making strong homes and families. That is the word that God gave me for, from the foundation and a tra- building uh, strong home faith and faith families and also um, a training center. So all of those things have come to pass. God's been faithful in it, and we see the results as well. This is kind of a revelation that I've been getting and have had and operated in without even knowing about it. But I feel like it's important to get across as we're looking at our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Just looking at the Lord's Prayer. And we'll have to remember that the Bible is a reader's digest of all that God had to say. And how many know that God is still saying? Hello? He didn't stop at Revelations. I don't know if you knew that. That's pretty quiet. But if we get revelation from the Word, then the Word is continually being inspired in us. Holy Spirit-inspired Word of God. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. And so all we do is kind of go and, and research and find out more and more of the depth of the Word and what God was saying. He said, those that study themselves approved. Oh, okay. That means that we need to study the Word of God. We need to research the Word of God. We need to seek His kingdom first. Seek means you have to look for, you got to dig for, you got to knock the doors down, you got to do whatever it takes to get the truth and then apply the truth to your life to produce the best possible life on this earth. We get born again, we got the best possible life for eternity. But he wants us to have the best possible life right here. And in order to do that, we have to apply the Word of God to work here. Actually, the Word of God has to work on our soul to affect our flesh so that the Spirit can quicken our mortal body. And so really, these points of interest that I'll be sharing today should give us greater insight to making our lives better. You can say, well, I'm too old for this sermon. It's already passed me by. No. Once you have the information, you can already begin to operate in it with your children and your children's children. You know, you you become mom and dad for an eternity. In fact, as mom and dad, your lifestyle and your life is infecting or infecting generations to come. That's why it's so imperative that we effectively do something with the word in our soul so we can pass the best inheritance down to our children's 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 children, 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 children. So now you know why I'm teaching this at least. And so the series sounds a little bit like it was for males or father, but it's for father oriented because we utilize our father. We said our refers to and should take care of all racism in the world. We only have one father, we have one mother. Hello. Amen. So we all came from the same place and the same origin, and when we get born again, it is whosoever. It's not whether you're white, black, green, yellow, or brown. It's whosoever. So therefore, it's our father, The Holy Spirit is our mother, and we are now joint heirs with Christ Jesus, or the Son, or the Word, and we are now sons of God. That's what the family of God is all about. Hello. So when you look at this, our Father is not only whosoever, but is male and female, and that is critical for you to grasp. He is three in one. You've heard the Trinity teaching for years, so you shouldn't have a problem with that. We pray for the Father through the Son. Listen to this close. We pray to the Father through the Son or the Word, but led by the Spirit. 
That's how it ought to be. Not led by your flesh. That's why you should pray the answer, not the problem. That's better word than you thought it was. Okay. <laughs> Uh, remember that Father is masculine, Holy Spirit is feminine, Son is the product of the two. This is how families are oriented. So this is really a study in Father God, the family, the unit, and how he planned the family to function. That's why we're just taking the word Father right now. We're going to get to who art in heaven. We'll get to all of that in time. The series has been growing. So the male is responsible for his seed. And just as God is responsible for his seed. How many know what the word of God is the seed? It's supposed to be planted in your heart and produce life. Is that right? We know that's scriptural. Okay. So it is so is the male or father responsible for his seed. But the female is responsible for the choosing of the seed. Husbands, you did not pick your wife. Your wife picked you. You think you picked her, but you didn't. She's the one that said yes. Really gets quiet on this subject. Uh, so but what, what makes that so important is that the husband or the male is responsible for the seed and the harvest of the seed, but because the female picks the seed, she becomes responsible for the harvest of the seed. So husband and wife are responsible for the outcome of the harvest. You can take that further. It, if, it, if the seed didn't take, you're still responsible. If you were sowing wild oats, you are still responsible for emotional damage. Mm, okay. That probably didn't go well either, but I'm trying to get to this. Okay. So the responsibility runs for generations to come. If you curtail a life, it isn't the life just that you curtailed. It is the generations that would have followed in that bloodline, which could be thousands and thousands of generations. Do you realize the magnitude of taking a life? Okay. This is the word of God. I'm not just saying we are responsible. I'm responsible for my sons. I'm responsible for my grandsons. I'm responsible for my great grand. I'm responsible for the seed and the outcome of the seed. And that never ceases. Never ceases. Okay, so we went down this road uh, that it is, it, is, it is imperative to understand that the Father sows the seed, the Holy Spirit chooses the seed. That's why he works inside of you to choose good, or if you will, choose truth. And Jesus is the truth. Now get, this is where faith works. Okay, so Father God sows a seed. That's his living word. The Holy Spirit is responsible to take us to the truth. And the Word of God has the power to produce. That too deep? This is where faith, this is what changes your tomorrows. But you have to allow the Holy Spirit to choose that truth. You could be listening to me today and say, no, I don't think that's true. Well, there you go. There'll be no fruit from it. But if it comes from the Holy Spirit inside of you, says this is true, then you better grab it. If it's not true, don't do not accept it. That's why it's important what you listen to and what you hear. It either brings life or it brings death. Okay. Okay, so 
Let me go through the first five because we got through five last week. And so the first five, we talked about salvation being equally yoked and how critical and important that becomes. It does not mean that you believe everything the same because Dr. Marine and I do not believe everything exactly the same. We believe Jesus is the way. Okay. <laughs> Amen. All 120 in the upper room did not all believe exactly the same. We, we can see that outcome in the Gospels. Come on. <laughs> okay. But equally yoked, we're hooked up, pulling together to build the kingdom of God. Not fighting each other, but striding together. This is husband and wife in a relationship and a marriage, stride together to build their children and their children's children. Mm. I know this might be a little heavy, but building homes, strong homes and families, I just, I, I've got to teach it. Okay, second, the husband and wife are the foundational or foundation builders. The Bible says you build your house on the rock. The Bible says if you build his house, he will build your house. Did you get this? This is just simple scriptures, but have you really evaluated it? If you build his house, he builds your house. If you build on the rock, which is the word of God, if you build on Christ Jesus, the outcome, if you make sure that your kids never miss church, if you get them into the house of God, it's about the message. It's not about the messenger. It's about whether the word of God is going to have the effect on their life and you train them up in the way that they should go. They will not depart from it. That's why God calls us into the house. Because he wants to train us up in the way that we should go that we won't depart from it. We won't fall away. We'll stand with it. That's good preaching. I don't have time to spend on each one. Foundation builders. Number three, women select the seed. That makes her responsible, as I just mentioned, for the harvest. But she needs to remain covered by her husband. Where we're finding great problems in our world and our nation today is that fathers are leaving the homes. And when fathers are leaving the home, a wife has to try to be husband and wife. She has to be father and mother, and it's not capable. These have a role to play in training the child in the way to go. Just, I want you to just think about this. She is covered by her husband, and then the family is covered by the church. When I see husband and wife leave the house, I don't see good results. Now, if they leave the house and go to another church, okay. Hello? But if they just leave the house, I don't like the results that I see. Because no longer can he build your house because you're not building his. No, you did not hear me. When you stop building his, he can't build yours. Let the Holy, to Holy Ghost take it to you. Um, do with it what you like. So she's covered by her husband and ultimately covered by the house of God. This is where your double protection comes, that it, you don't drift into something that's not God. That is why Father God can be Father God to women who have lost their husbands. He will be the father to the fatherless. That's what the Bible says. He's covered all of the area. I sort of grew up without a mother. He was a Holy Spirit, I believe, started guiding my life way early and saving my life. You could not imagine how many times I could have been killed in the alleys of Naples. But the Holy Spirit was guiding my life very young. He was the mother to the motherless. I'm hoping you get it. God will always lead you to the best life, and when he leads you to the best life, when a husband leads his family to the best life, he gains the best life. When a father... <laughs> 
guides his family to the best life, he gains the best life. It is what you sow is what you reap. If you don't like the harvest, check the seed, baby. Lord of God, I got to hurry because I got so much to say here. Okay. The fourth one. Set the atmosphere. Husband and wife do set the atmosphere in the home. But I put a great deal of responsibility on husbands. I don't know why I did this because I didn't know what I know today. But I know this, that I come home from working in attics and sheet metal and welding, whatever it was I was doing construction. In my mind as I drive, I was thinking about what attitude I was going to come in the door with. Whether I was bringing her a brownie, which she got mad about it, but I just wanted, you want me to gain weight? Why are you bringing me a but something about a gift, something that said, I was thinking about you when I wasn't here. Don't tell me that doesn't have an effect. Hello. And when I walked in the door, I always walked in the door with great joy. Just up and excited and so happy to be home. I had all of the opportunities to go out with the boys and, and to neglect the old lady. I'm probably hitting on some bad stuff here. But see, I couldn't wait to get home. In construction, I was hanging out with all these guys. Their first stop was the bar. After a hard day's work, you just got to have something cool, baby. I said, well, my wife is cool, baby. And so I would set the atmosphere and bring in joy into the house and not grumbling and not complaining, but lifting everybody up no matter what their day was like. You set the atmosphere. And the wife does the same thing when he's not home. Set the atmosphere. Let it be filled with joy. Let it be filled with the goodness of God. Let it be filled. It has such a tremendous effect on your kids. Remember when they get up in the morning for a few years in their life, they grumble and drag themselves to the table. And I say, okay, here's your options. If you're not happy, get happy. If you can't get happy, pretend to be happy. Because in this house, you're going to be happy. Yeah. I'm just training them in the way they should go. Now, maybe sound like I'm bragging. I don't care. Okay. Number five, finally get into some new stuff. And we talked about the energy and the beauty and the ideal balance that also has to be in the home. It's, it's the ability not to be a dictator, but to be responsible for the home and family. Both are responsible, so you can't be a co constant controller, but you have to be able to guide and to direct. And, and when it comes to discipline, and you have to be able to discern between good and evil, but discernment and mercy. Because when were you perfect? But you always discipline the behavior, never the child. I said, you discipline the behavior. I love you, but I don't like what you're doing, and you're going to change. Whatever that takes. With Scott, it took something, and with Jason, it took something else. It was not going to tell you any more than that, but some took a little bit more. I think I talked about that last week a little bit. Okay, so you got a major on the majors and minor on minors. Did you get that? There are things that are major that can destroy, harm, or kill, or do something to their life. You have to major on those. But if it's something that's don't 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 make a big deal about it. You can talk about it, but just chill out. You were never perfect. Okay. Number six. You carry fathers, male and female, carry the energy of discernment and restriction. 
I know nobody's going to like that word. Discernment and restriction in the home. If you do not have boundaries, you will have hell to pay. This modern child raising crap is horrible. You let the child decide what is good and evil? Holy. I'm not going to say it, but what on earth is wrong with you? Discernment and restriction. It's not law. See, the ten suggestions or the ten commandments were restrictions that God tried to impose to take them to a good life, not a law that crossed their will. Law crosses your will. Grace gives you the freedom of your will to choose good or evil. That's the difference between grace and law in its simplest form. And so you have to have a certain level of restrictions. I love you, but I don't like your behavior, as I mentioned. You have to have a certain... Amen. We had restrictions in our home. Be home at 12. Midnight. When they were in high school, they were driving. But also with that came... Don't drive fast because you left at 12. Trying to live by a law, I'll give you grace if you're late. Hello? So the restriction can't be law, but it has... It, I, I tried my hardest to impose this on my sons. You don't want to hurt the heart of your father. They had that built into them. They did not want to hurt my heart. When I disciplined them, I cried more than they did. Am I right? <laughs> but that built something into them that they didn't want to hurt my heart. Doesn't mean they didn't do stuff. He came home and said, Dad, I got another ticket. My response was, how are you going to pay for it? Yep. It's called responsibility and accountability. I didn't get upset over it. I got my share of tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Not too long ago. Uh, <laughs> oh, he didn't give me a ticket. That's right. He gave me mercy and grace. Yeah, that was just a few months ago. Bless God for that. Love those police. They're awesome. Amen. Okay, number seven. Uh, I'm going a little fast, but I want to make sure I get it in because I'm at zero, 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 zero. Seven. Lovers of unrestricted giving nearly to a fault. Um, lovers of unrestricted giving nearly to a fault. Uh, you know, immediately you went to money, and that's okay, but don't, don't hang out there, because every area of your life is about giving. How do you give grace and mercy to your children, to your spouse? How do you give grace and mercy to others? How, how, how does that operate? How does the love of God operate in your life that gives grace and mercy and circumstances and situations? So it's, it's unrestricted giving Almost to a fault, because there is a place that becomes fault, and it becomes presumptuous giving. Fred Price talked about presumptuous giving. You don't want to avoid that. I got a word from the God years ago to give it all. Every penny in our account, savings account, in the middle of the month. That was in the building of this church. And from that came the millionaire book, you, I, somebody built me a house. I just, you, but you don't do that unless you know you heard a word from God. Otherwise, you're going to be poor and not be able to pay your bills. Led by the Spirit, not by what you think your reward might be. 
Rouge. Write it down. Number eight. Must understand the female effect. This is where women's role is so powerful in the home and family. The woman is the energy. She is the power. That the way it actually is written is the energy of motivation of human endeavor. She is the power that forces, not forces, but motivates and, and, and propels the husband to slay the dragon, to overcome the mountain, to supernaturally provide, to supernaturally protect. She is the one that is the energy and the motivation. That's why you never want to marry a lazy wife. You, she's the one that will propel you to success. But with that propelling, she has certain responsibilities. Because the weakest part of a man is his ego. She's got to send him out with a strong ego, not a destroyed ego. She's got to drain just enough testosterone off from him so he doesn't mess around at work. But leaves enough testosterone that he can work hard. She has, com she has complete control. So, so Adam went, to G went up to... Adam went up to... Uh, God and said, uh, God says to Adam, I want you to go over and give Eve a hug. And he, so he went over to Eve and he gave her a hug and he came back and said, Ooh, Lord, that was nice. I really enjoyed that. God said, Go give her a kiss. Said, okay. He went over and he gave her a kiss and he came back. He said, well, That's even nicer yet. And God said, Go over and procreate. So he went over, came right back and he said, God, what's a headache? So you know who's in control. I said, you know who's in control. So they control the world from the beginning. So, some parts of the sermon is not going well. Okay. Number nine, I don't need to spend any time on this because it is the wisdom of God beyond reason is needed in home and family. Wisdom of God, use of resource, discernment. You've heard me teach all on the wisdom of God and understanding heart. I don't need to go through that because I'm totally out of time. But I want to get this last one in, and, this is, and then we can go on. The last one is male and female have or are to have undifferentiated potential of energy that sends a continual flow of movement and energy to the spouse and to the children's children and never quits, never stops, never can always continues to build, never destroys, is constantly active. And now you know the reason why I cannot retire. I have to be responsible to continue to send the energy, the motivation, the power to flow from us through my sons, through my grandchildren, and for generations to come. I can't stop because if I stop, I stop sending that kind of motivation and energy to build this is the foundation of home and family. This is what God was talking to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, this is who our God is to us. This is who we are to be to our families. And it covers every area so well and so thorough. And I could teach on each one of them for a week, but I, I, I want to get through this, and maybe I will in the future. 
because uh, there's so much more to it. I, I gave you a general understanding. And if you got anything out of it, give the Lord a hand clap. I'm going to quit. Hi, I hope you've enjoyed my program today. I know we're trying to take the Word of God and really bring understanding to your heart that it has the power, the Word of God has the power to change your life. And so I just ask that you continue to subscribe, tune in, share with somebody, but continue to grow in Christ and the Word of God. It's the most powerful thing in the universe. It can change everything in your life. I want to make sure that people out there that are listening have had an opportunity to receive Christ you may know about Christ, you may believe the Bible, but you've never received Jesus as the Lord and Savior. I prayed that prayer when I was 27 years old, changed and revolutionized my entire life. I just encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Just speak it aloud today, and it will change your whole life. Just try it and watch and see God is faithful to do what he said. So I just ask you to repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. And I invite Christ Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. I receive you now, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm telling you, your life will be revolutionized. Call us and let us know if you've tuned in. Continue to watch the program and grow in the Word of God. It's the best life there is on this earth. God bless you.